welcome everyone here today to uh, Furman University's press conference. I wanted to, first of all, thank the NCAA and the New England Patriots for allowing us to be here. My name is Chris Colvin. I'm Associate Athletic Director at Furman. And I'd like to first introduce Furman President Rod Small. Well, welcome, everybody. Thank you for being here. Uh, let me add my thanks as well uh, to the NCAA and uh, to the Patriots for letting us have this venue. Uh, it's a very symbolic uh, matter that we're gathered here uh, at the center of the universe for collegiate lacrosse uh, as everyone will be enjoying uh, the semifinal games and the championships at the various levels of uh, intercollegiate lacrosse uh, because we think that the announcement that we're making today, announcing Richie Mead as our new Division I men's coach, and the announcement that we will make next week in which we announce the hiring of our new uh, Division I women's coach, uh, are not only good things for Furman, but important developments for lacrosse in this country, and more broadly for intercollegiate athletics in this country. Uh, as you all know, you lacrosse fans and supporters well know, uh, it is one of the fastest growing sports in the United States. Uh, and more importantly, it is a sport that exemplifies the ideals of the scholar-athlete uh, and the ideals for which the NCAA itself was founded. Uh, it, lacrosse as a sport should be proud that consistently the teams in all of the divisions rank among the highest in their academic achievement and their graduation rates uh, and in the kind of character that they bring to the universities in which the, the, the lacrosse teams are playing. Um, we are excited not only about joining the ranks of Division I teams, but we're excited about what Furman's decision can do for the sport. Uh, we think it has the potential to help uh, attract more youth to lacrosse at, uh, at the elementary school levels. We think it will be a positive thing for lacrosse at the high school and prep school levels across the United States, uh, and we think it will be an impetus to other universities to consider joining um, in first-rate lacrosse programs. When we made the decision to be one of the uh, schools in the South that would enter with uh, all chips in, uh, with a goal of fully funding uh, to the NCA maximum all of our scholarships, uh, giving our coaches the resources they needed, uh, creating the facilities uh, that we need to play at the highest level, of course, our most important priority was to locate the very, very best coach we could for our men's program and for our women's program. And what we were looking for was not just someone who we knew knew the game well, but we were looking for someone who would exemplify the sport itself, who would have been identified as a champion for the sport and as a leader for the sport. And because we believe in trying to do athletics right, we also wanted someone who understood the role of academics and who understood the role of building character in the student athletes that we bring to Furman. As our search began, one name was always at the top of everyone's list. No matter who we talked to in the lacrosse world around the country, um, Richie Mead was the first name that people mentioned uh, as exactly the kind of person that we were looking for. And when we brought him to the campus, uh, I will say it was love at first sight. He swept us off our feet. Uh, that I'll never forget the meeting that I had alone with Richie in my office in which I got to know him. Know him as a family man, know him as a person devoted to his student athletes, know him as a person of great character, and know him as a person who loves his country and who deeply cherished the service that he gave to the Naval Academy. We have in this room right now a number of his former players that have served the United States with extraordinary valor and distinction. He is a person that not only cares about the game of lacrosse, but about the life lessons that it creates for people, the discipline, the sacrifice, the teamwork, the character that it can build. Uh, and that's exactly the kind of thing we're looking for. And in fact, we're not simply going to be hiring Richie as a lacrosse coach. He's also going to have a leadership role within our athletic department so that he can promote those values of leadership, uh, and character that matters so much and are really at the heart and soul of what NCAA sports were supposed to be. I am as proud as can be uh, that we have uh, brought this great person onto our um, uh, staff at Furman University. I think it will be uh, great for the sport uh, at all levels. Uh, and I'm now um, privileged.
privilege to represent uh, or to introduce to you our Vice President and Director of Athletics, uh, my friend Gary Clark, who will formally introduce our new coach, Richie Mead. Gary? Thank, thank you, Ryan. Uh, I'd also like to add my thanks to Kristen and Michael and Phil uh, from the NCAA and the Patriots for allowing us this opportunity. We couldn't have imagined a, a greater place to make this announcement. We couldn't be prouder to do that. And as President Smola said, the addition of women's and men's lacrosse as varsity sports at Furman will benefit our university as a whole, and we have great hope that it will benefit the gross growth of lacrosse in the South as well. Uh, we believe that Coach Richie Mead is the ideal person to jumpstart our men's program, but also we think he's the ideal combination of experience and leadership to help grow lacrosse in a non-traditional area of the country, such as the South. And so, having played in the South, he's familiar with the region. He played at UNC. Richie began his coaching career there as well, serving as an assistant at both Duke and UNC. He's also been an assistant at the U.S. Military Academy and head coach at the University of Baltimore and the U.S. Naval Academy. He's presently the head coach for the U.S. National Senior Men's Lacrosse Team that will compete in the FIL World Championships in 2014. And it is with great pleasure that uh, I introduce Furman University's Assistant Athletic Director for Student Athlete Leadership and our first men's lacrosse head coach, Richie Mead. appreciate everybody being here. I know it's a very busy day. Uh, I want to thank uh, President Smoller and Gary Clark and the Furman community for their trust uh, in me to start men's lacrosse at Furman University. And uh, my family and I are very excited to join the Furman community. And there, there, are, um, there are certain things that I think were really important to me as, as I started to learn about Furman. Uh, as an institution, as a school, when I got down there, every single person that I met uh, has a deep emotional feeling for the university. That's not unusual for alumni. Uh, usually when people mature and they, and they grow in life, they realize and appreciate the, uh, the value of their education and certainly Furman uh, gives that type of educational experience. But what gripped me was the attitude of the students. And I was impressed with the fact that the students at Furman University when I was there, you, you got a sense that they truly appreciated the type of education that they received. And, you know, when, when, when the media, when, uh, when alumni, when administrators, when they look at a lacrosse program, you know, they usually look at the outcome, what happens in the outcome. When coaches, teachers look at getting to that outcome, they look at the process. So in my evaluation, what I was looking for uh, personally was a place that valued the process by which you get to the end. Make no mistake about it. Uh, we want to compete, and we want to compete very quickly at the highest level. The thing that impressed me most about Furman, and, and that being the people, the atmosphere, was that they have everything in place to facilitate an outstanding process for student athletes. Uh, student academic support, the, uh, the right value structure to produce true student athletes. It's a, uh, it's, it's a wonderful campus. When I, when I walked on the campus and I looked at it, I said to myself, I in fact called my wife Sue and I said, you feel really safe here and you'd be really proud for your kid to go to school here because you can tell it's a caring environment. That's very important. In terms of athletic facilities, it is, it's going to become one of the best facilitated lacrosse programs in the country. Uh, we have a 20,000 seat stadium. It's going to be AstroTurf under President Smoller's direction. There's going to be facility improvement. We have a 3,000 seat grass soccer uh, stadium. That's the best I've ever seen any place I've ever been, and we can play games there. Um, we, we, we have everything in place in order to bring outstanding student athletes there and play lacrosse at a great level. All those things are tangible. You can look at those things and you can, you can touch those things and feel good about those things. But, but the things that are most important are the intangibles. 
the things that you can't write down on paper, the things that you feel when you look man to man at an individual and say, you know, we're embarking on a very difficult thing here. There's nothing that's going to be easy about starting a program and getting to the place where we want to get to. And most of you know I'm not a very patient man. But the, the things that impressed me intangibly was the character and integrity of the people that I had a chance to talk with. From President Smoller on down, uh, Dr. Clark, every single person I talked to Furman had one thing in common. They loved Furman University. The people in the city of Greenville, South Carolina, love Furman University. They're committed to Furman. The sport of lacrosse, like most other schools uh, uh, that start lacrosse, it's in a community where if you drive around Greenville, South Carolina, it's just like driving around Baltimore, Maryland, or Annapolis, Maryland. There's lacrosse cages in the backyard. There's kids trying to break your window with a lacrosse ball flying out. Uh, th there's a lot of energy there. So I, I think we can be successful. And we're going to be successful by, by recruiting true student athletes. You know, we're, we're going to look for kids that value education. One of the other things that really impressed me about Furman is a concept that I'd never heard of before. You know, I've been in higher education for 35 years. The concept of engaged learning kind of struck me uh, when I started to read up on my research uh, regarding Furman. And what engaged learning is, is basically a faculty that wants to teach. In a very small classroom environment, uh, faculty, staff, they want to talk to you. You're not going to sit in a 350 room lecture hall. The teachers were very much engaged. Every faculty member I talked to had tremendous enthusiasm for their students. And so I, I thought that was very impressive. When you walk around the facilities, you can sense a camaraderie on the campus. You can sense, you know, I was there during the time of final exams. Students were studying together in facilities that have been designed for students to interact with each other. They're not on a computer. They're dealing person to person with themselves. So all those things, I think, create tremendous energy. And, and I, you know, I could sense that a lacrosse program, you know, with dedication, commitment, courage to go out and compete against the best could be successful. So I'm enthusiastic beyond, beyond words to be the first lacrosse coach at Furman University. The next thing I'd just like to mention is, uh, you know, this is Memorial Day. The, uh, everybody's, everybody's pretty aware of where I've been the last 25 years. And uh, the Naval Academy at West Point uh, has done a tremendous amount for me. Being around the student athletes, being around the midshipmen especially, has really done a lot for me and taught me a lot. Uh, I, I have and do cherish all the... Uh, all the interactions with the kids, not necessarily the games. You know, the outcome of the game, the winning, the losing, the press conferences, all that stuff is part of the job. The <clears throat> early morning workouts, in the weight room, those, those significant conversations that you have with, with young men that you never forget the rest of your life, and they never forget. That's one of the things I've missed. One of the things I'm proud of is that every single individual that I've coached at West Point and at the Naval Academy have gone to war. Uh, and their sacrifices have been significant. Uh, you know, we've been very fortunate and blessed. Uh, we lost one of, our, one of our men, Brendan Looney. Everybody's very well aware of that. I'm, uh, I'm thankful to the NCAA that Brendan Looney's going to be recognized on Monday. I'm thankful to the NCAA that Jimmy Regan, who was an outstanding student and athlete at Duke University, was an Army Ranger. Both he and Brendan were Special Forces uh, warriors, lost his life in defense of our nation's cause. And we should never forget it. This is a great day for me, and it's a great day for my family. But this weekend is about celebrating the sacrifice of a tremendous generation of kids that have defended our freedom. Uh, the lessons I learned from those young men are going to be a constant source 
of motivation and inspiration to me as I move forward, and I will think of that every day the rest of my life. Thank you.
they have bent over backwards to be sensitive to my family. Um, and I think that was a big sign to me. This was not, this was being done the right way. And then uh, Sue and I had the opportunity to go down last weekend, finish up some things, uh, ask some more questions. And the, the whole thing was very welcoming. And then we came home and, and made the decision that we were going to do this. I, I will say this, that, that when I met with President Small, it was very apparent to me, he's, he's a man of vision, and he mentioned that to me. And uh, I thought of two things. One was, when I was at West Point, uh, at Army, at the Military Academy, they always talk about good officers and leaders marching to the sound of the guns. And so I had that in my mind that I, I, was very, I was very happy and very comfortable at the Naval Academy, but I didn't want to look back in 10 years and think I could have done more. And uh, that's number one. Number two, when I was growing up, like most kids on Long Island, I grew up in a little house with three, three bedrooms and one bathroom. And in that bathroom was something my mother put in there. And it said, ships in the harbor are safe, but that's not what ships are for. So those two things kept going through my head, believe it or not. And uh, I didn't think at the end of the day that myself, my family, could pass up this opportunity to do something like this at a place like Furman. Well, you all can see why we're so thrilled to have Richie on board. And uh, I second uh, his wonderful, eloquent thoughts about the importance of this weekend, not just for the cross, but for the country remembering all the people that have fought and died for us. Uh, and he's a winner, and uh, he's a winner in more ways than one loss record. But I do have to say, I'm looking forward to that time when we're back here at the Final Four, and I see some Paladin uh, uh, helmets on that field. So uh, we'll, we'll see you again someday. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.